Okay, I have with me uh, Peter Hacker, who is CEO of CTM Business at JLT. Thank you very much for uh, coming to join us this, this morning. I know you're very busy here. The schedule for Ram is quite tight for you, so thank you for spending some time time with us today. Um, I know that, that JLT, and your, the particular part of JLT that you, you're with, is looking quite closely now at sort of issues around intangible assets. Would you like to sort of explain the, the, sort of the, the rationale behind that and what, what you're trying to achieve for, for business and, and also what risk managers can, can expect from that? Thank you, Mike. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here today with uh, strategic risks. Um, by all means, let me start with the definition of intangible mm. assets and where this, this approach really comes from. Um, number one, if we look into the market value of many communication media technology companies or in general of uh, corporate companies around the world, and what we have seen in the past is that in general, in the past, everything was asset driven. The value of a company was very much asset driven. If you look at today, probably around between 80 to 90 percent, sometimes even more than 90 percent of the value of a company is driven by intangibles. If I talk about intangibles, it's nothing else than the aspect on the one side of information and knowledge. It's the brand, it's the reputation, it's the intellectual capital, intellectual property on the one side. But then also what we call more the aspects, the physical aspects, which are always the aspects related to the supply chain. Mm -hmm. One of the things which we are particularly keen on is um, to talk about the broader understanding <laughs> of cyber at the moment. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about cyber, then we need to understand that cyber, whether we talk about network security or talk about privacy, is really one part of an intangible asset risk. And it's probably the wrong word if we talk about cyber in itself. We rather should talk about intangibles at the end. Mm. Because intangibles obviously include first party risks as well as third party risks at the end of the day. Now, we at JLT, particularly in the communication technology media practice, we're looking at these kind of risks on a global basis. We're trying to find solutions, whether they are from an advisory point of view or from a structuring and risk transfer point of view, based on the local requirements. What we very often see as a distinction factor from our point of view is that we are talking about solutions based on the local requirements, based on the local, for instance, data directives, based on local data we see. Data is one of the key five key points from our point of view, which are driving the success of any insurer under a broker at the end of the day. In my view, it is whoever is in a position to keep the data and develop the data, integrate the data into solutions and advice, is going to be one or two steps ahead of the competition. But there Secondly, are significant issues around that data, aren't there? Absolutely, absolutely, because one of the key issues currently is that it's the reliability of data. The reliability of data on the one side related to frequency claims and the other side related to severity claims. Because when we talk, for instance, about the third party ENO side, the technology ENO side, it's a very much a driven where area where we see a lot of you know high frequency claims. You know, when we're talking to privacy claims, or we talk about network security claims, we see a relatively high frequency of these kind of claims, but relatively still low severity. Now, if we talk about the more the first party non-physical damage BI, which is nothing else than really an IT failure, or if someone hacks the system and interferes the system or interrupts the system, we're talking about a relatively low frequency, but a really high severity. So the challenge going forward is, given the development of intangibles, given the development of data, how can we combine the first party side to the third party side? Now, JLT's approach on that, the JLT solution is what we call an IPI solution. An IPI solution is nothing else than really build around the traditional risk management approach, which is first understand what risk you have out there, understand what the risk profile is, be able to quantify these risks from a severity and frequency point of view. The most important understand why clients want to buy insurance. Are they more PL driven? Are they more balance sheet driven? Once you've done that, we shouldn't just talk about here is a solution, here is a product which we want to pitch for. Rather, we need to think about what clients are already buying. What coverage do they have already related to intangibles or specific cyber in property 
in casualty, in ENO and crime, or even partially the ENO. And then look at scenarios out of these particular coverages and risk landscapes, and then structure a solution. Most important, these kind of solutions need to be structured from the loss angle. What do I mean with that? We need to come from stress scenarios, we need to come from past losses and work backwards so that ultimately the policy is really going to respond. And response is the risk transfer on the one side. But what is much more important currently if we talk about intangibles are the aspects related to advice, which means interference advice, which means protection advice related to brand, protection advice related to reputation, and it means forensic accountancy. That's what it is rather than just pitching for a solution right now from an insurance point of view.